Welcome to Cool History 76. Today we're going to talk about economics. There's the theory called the broken glass theory. Now, you may have heard of it. For those of you who haven't, it's, it's basically like this. Um, a baseball goes through a window. A hurricane destroys a window. Uh, whatever happens, the window is broken and it must be replaced. Now, when a window needs replacing, it stimulates the economy. Because, after all, somebody has to make the glass window, somebody has to transport the glass window, somebody has to install the glass window, and all those men or women, they um, take the money they made and they go to the store and they buy more stuff which stimulates more uh, economic activity. It's awesome! Except I don't believe in it. And I'm going to explain to you why I don't believe in it. And a lot of really intelligent people also agree with me because <clears throat> there's a major flaw. Now, the, state, uh, the theory states this. A loss of property creates wealth, or economic activity, which is creating wealth. So, let me restate this. Destroying the window, or destroying wealth, because property is wealth, destroying the wealth that you have in your window creates economic activity, or creates wealth. So, destroying wealth creates wealth. Destroying wealth creates wealth. Well, that sounds... Wait a minute. That sounds crazy! Okay. Nah, nobody believed that. That's insane. Um, yeah, they do believe it. After World War II, we had literally dumped military trucks over the edge of aircraft carriers into the ocean. Why? Because they were afraid that an oversupply of military trucks, like you might sell them to farmers or whatever, an oversupply <clears throat> would cut into General Motors and Ford's business. Wouldn't want to do that. Why? Uh, people might not have jobs or something. In 1934, another example, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, he uh, took the value of the dollar and he lowered it by 41%. Wouldn't you like it if, if the money in your wallet was devalued by 41%? No? Why not? Don't you understand? Destroying wealth creates wealth. It's simple. If you believe in the broken glass theory, of course. However, by devaluing the dollar, he made it so that the $20.67 ounce of gold now took $35 to purchase, destroying 41% of the American dollar value. Um, therefore, destroying wealth he thought would create wealth by creating economic activity. Um, another example, during the Great Depression, uh, the government bought up farm produce and then destroyed it. Destroying wealth to create wealth? Yeah, exactly. They did that. And people were literally starving. And the government, is, it wasn't popular, no. Um, now, they believe this works because when a window is broken, people are put to work. It creates economic activity. However, um, we need to work smart, not hard. Just because someone's put to work doesn't mean that it's good for the economy. Because um, you can work really, you can like spin your wheels and just keep, you know, making stuff and destroying stuff and making stuff and destroying stuff. What's the point? Why don't we just keep what we have and make more stuff? To double our prosperity. When the window isn't broken, you can take the money that you would have used to replace that window and you can take that money and invest it or spend it. Because most all money is basically spent or invested. Because very few people put their money in a mattress. So it's either at the bank where it's being invested in other people's homes and whatever, uh, or it's being spent on things that people manufacture. So, um, when we don't have a broken window, or the destruction of property, then we can reinvest that money into other things. Keep what we have, and produce more. But they believe that work equals prosperity. As long as you're working and slaving away for the system, they're happy. Well, <clears throat> let's, let's look at it this way. Suppose you had $50,000 you'd saved up, and you decided you wanted to take a year off of work and, and better yourself by taking classes at the university or taking a trip somewhere, or maybe spending time studying the Word of God, whatever suits you. 
You're just going to take time to develop who you are. But then I come on and say, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to make sure you're put to work. So we're going to destroy that $50,000. And what are you going to do? You're going to go back to work. Isn't that great? You're working again, slaving away for the system. Yahoo! Okay, you're not so excited about this idea. I don't know why. Look, wealth comes from productive capacity, not destruction of property. We have to be able to produce stuff to create wealth. Wealth comes not from how many hours we work, but from how much we accomplish while we are working. In the macroeconomic picture, the destruction of wealth is just that, the destruction of wealth. Well, thank you for watching, and please subscribe. See you later.